Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Ford Tech Make You Loco channel. Today we're going to go over a real common failure in the four wheel drive systems on four pickup trucks. So it could be an Expedition, F 150, uh, Excursion, Super Duty, doesn't matter. If you have an electronic shift in the fly system like this right here, this motor is going to fail eventually. Now, the most common code is the P1867, which is a uh, transfer case general contact plate failure so basically this motor it turns inside of here to select the different gears two-wheel drive four-wheel drive high four-wheel drive low well it has a position plate right here inside of there inside of here so it can always tell its position it knows is it in two-wheel high four-wheel drive high or four-wheel drive low so it needs a new position once it loses position It'll either get stuck in four low, four high, or two high, depending on where it failed last, okay? That's a very common failure, but luckily, it's a very quick fix. The only problem is the Ford motor, which is the one I recommend you get, is expensive. It's like 250 bucks, but hopefully, it's the last time you need to change it for the life of the truck. So today, we're going to go over the procedure to change this out. There is a specific way to do it. Uh, but like I said, it, it's pretty darn easy. It's right on the back of the transfer case here. So you, everything's right here. Nothing's really in the way besides maybe the skid plate on certain vehicles. So let's turn it around and get to it. All right, here we go. Now you do not need to jack the vehicle up to get underneath here and replace this. Um, you can keep it in park, but it's always a good idea to chalk the wheels to make sure you're safe while you're underneath the vehicle, of course. The only time you're gonna to have to probably jack it up and put it into neutral and all the other good stuff is if the transfer case shift motor is actually stuck uh, in a gear, like four high or especially four low, okay? If it's not responding, it won't get out of it. Uh, we're probably gonna to have to turn it manually and that's gonna require us to be in neutral and all the lash, all the bind in the drive line gone. But otherwise, you do not need to do that. So I go ahead and I usually use air, clean up around it. Also, when you pull this off of here, nothing's going to leak out. There's a shaft inside of there, uh, but it's all sealed up, so you're not going to leak anything, so don't worry about that either. So the first thing you need to do is identify what kind of circuit you have coming to this main bulkhead connector that's going out to the body harness, okay? That's part of their shift motor harness. So on the newer vehicles, you just have a synchronization clutch right in here uh, that attaches to this wire here. It's like a single wire. That goes over. We need to transfer this wire to our new uh, bulkhead sleeve. I'll show you how to do that. So it's best now uh, to go ahead and just push down on the black release here and then pull this off, put it up and out of the way. Okay, it's kind of up and out of the way. Hopefully it stays there. And then we can go ahead and pull this off of here. Get it off of here just like this. And we can go ahead and separate this wire from here uh, while it's all still mounted up so it's not dangling on us. Okay. So you'll see inside of here, look at my pliers. You'll see inside of here red, two red stripes right here. Those are actually uh, retainers for the wires that are in there. So they clip in and then it's like a secondary lock. So just grab the pliers just like that and pull it out. You do need to transfer it over to your new shift motor. Keep this to the side. Now you're gonna look inside of here with the flashlight and you're concentrating on just on this wire, okay? And inside of here, you'll notice there, there's, the, there's the pin right there, okay? Just below it, there's gonna be a little retainer. And you wanna use a small pick like this or a very small flat blade screwdriver, get underneath it and release it. Now, once you release it just a little bit, it'll pull right out of there. Barely any effort. What's nice that these go back in only one way. There's only one pin open on a new one, just like this one, and they're round, so they stick right in. There's no indexing, they're not spade connectors. So we'll take this off to the side. That's probably the hardest part of the whole job. Put that to the side. Now, this thing bolts up with three bolts. One, two, three. 
to the actual transfer case. And then over here, there's two nuts and one bolt in the transfer case. So I'll take this bolt out first, 10 mil. Get that out of the way, keep that for later. And then there's the three bolts right here. And they should come out. I've never had one corrode and break on me. Here's the last one, get ready, it's gonna come down. Now these do have engine, well they have sealant on them from the factory, so they'll stick a little bit. Just a little bit. This one's got 200,000 miles on it. So I guess this guy really can't complain. A little pry of the bar there, and it kind of breaks that bond of corrosion on there. So you can see the shaft right here that it actually splines to, the new motor will spline to, and it only splines to it one way so you can not mess it up. See, there's a little oil seal inside of there, but generally these are nice and dry, no leakage from them ever. Never seen one leak in my career. All right, now let's prep the surface here for our new motor. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of scotch right on here to clean it up, make sure it's smooth, no extra sealant left over. So we get a nice flush mount on there. As best we can, let's get the excess off. Just so it's nice, same thing over here in case anything's built up. You want it to all sit perfectly in there. Look the press there. Before installing the new shift motor, they want you to seal the perimeter here with a little bit of either trans or gear sealant. I use the Permatech stuff. The gray stuff so it kind of blends in and just put a light coating on there. It's just a light coating to keep dust and dirt and water and all that good stuff out. All right. Now, a new shift motor comes pre indexed for two wheel drive. Remember, it can only spline into the shaft on here one way. So, you'll know what gear you're in um, based on if it, if it splines or not. Okay, move it around, and sure enough, right there, it goes right in. Some of these, once you pull us off of here, you'll see on the inside. It'll tell you the difference, you know, two high and four high and, 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 and four low. So you can get an idea where to put it to get it lined up in there. But just remember that if it's not lining up, you need to turn that shaft manually and line it up so this kind of just drops in like you just saw, minimal movement. And it kind of just drops right in. So all these screws on here, you want to... Um, get started by hand, okay? And then we can snug them real light with the impact or hand tools. And then the torque spec on these is 89 inch pounds. You want to torque all three of these. There's no sequence, but you wanna torque all three of these first. Once these are torqued, we can go over to this side to the bracket and work on that. So 89 inch pounds for these. Let me get this thing mounted up. I like to recheck. Once these three bolts are torqued to 89 inch pounds, we can come over here and start torquing down and bolting up this bracket. So the first thing you want to do is take your bolt we took out earlier and we're gonna get it threaded in here by hand, okay? What you want to do these nuts are gonna be on the new motor, but loose. You wanna push it to there, okay? And push in, and then you wanna to push towards the case, okay? So push in, and then towards the case. And we're gonna tighten that one down next. So the bolt is the second one we torque down. Again, 89 inch pounds. And the final one is these two nuts right here. And again, 89 inch pounds. All 
Okay. And finally, let's complete the wiring on here. So we're gonna take the new pigtail, came with the new uh, shift motor, and we're gonna go ahead and insert our synchro wire. There's only gonna be one slot available on there. On some of the older vehicles that had actual speed sensors, front and rear on here, uh, you're gonna have to transfer those wires over too. Just do it one at a time and you won't have any issues. But on these newer ones, there's one synchro wire. You can't mess it up and there's only one spot on here that's open, okay? So you simply push it on through. You hear a click, okay? Give it a little tug and it shouldn't come out. Now, before we forget, let's go ahead and insert our retainer. It can go in this way or this way, it doesn't matter. Just make sure it's pushed in all the way, like that, it'll snap. And then we can go ahead and push this into the retainer. Oh, that one's tight. And then come down, make sure this is clean. Your body connector. Get clean a little bit with some air. And we're gonna do the same thing. Until it clicks, just like that. So let's go through and make sure everything you did looks good to go. Everything's torqued down, the wiring's completed, and that's all there is to it. And finally, the last step is to clear all the codes from the controlling module. Uh, in most cases, it's the PCM. As you can see in the 2009 F-150s, they went back to a, a separate transfer case control module. So go ahead and clear codes with your scan tool. If you don't have a scan tool, disconnect your negative battery cable, five, 10 minutes, reconnect, and go for a test drive. Test all those modes, four high, four low, two high, all that, make sure everything works correctly once again. That's all for now. I hope I helped you guys fix your Ford yourself. See you next time, guys.